Good morning, everyone. I'm so glad that you're here today. I'm mostly glad that you're healthy and well and, and feeling good. We've got some sick people who are, well, I didn't rephrase that right. <laughs> we have some sick people. Yeah, no, we have some folks who are not feeling well, my wife being one of them, so she won't be here today. So pr be praying for those who are struggling with this nasty cough that's going around right now. It's not COVID. You don't have to worry about that. But, uh, but we do need to be praying for one another that God will just protect our church family. Amen to that? And pray that God, we have quite a number who uh, let me know this week that they're just not going to be able to make it because of... Uh, of illness. So, um, um, so let's just begin with a word of prayer. Father, thank you for this time we can be together. We are here for one reason and one reason only, and that is to bring glory and honor to your name, to worship you from hearts that are filled with your spirit, from hearts that have been blessed, from lives that have been touched by you, that have been changed from death to life, from lives, Lord, uh, hearts that uh, are just uh, filled with love for you. So, Lord, accept our praise today. May your presence be very real in this place, I pray. In Jesus' precious name, amen. A number of you were given a scripture verse, and uh, I'd like for you to read it out loud when I call your number. This is going to be a popcorn testimony, a popcorn praise time. So right from where you are, you don't have to stand, you don't have to wait for a microphone, just shout that scripture out, okay? And let's see what happens, and may God be God be praised. Praise. Number one. Good. Number two. Great is the Lord and worthy of praise in the city of our God and his holy mountain. Number three. I will proclaim the name of the Lord, proclaim the greatness of our God. Number four. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. Six. Praise the Lord, O my soul. The Lord my God, you are very great. You are exalted with pleasure and majesty. Seven. I will praise you, Lord among the nations. I will sing of you among the people. Eight. Nine. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day, for great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. Ten. Thirteen. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Fourteen. Praise God in the great congregation. Praise the Lord in the assembly of his people. Fifteen. Rejoice in the Lord, and people are righteous. Praise the Holy Lord. Sixteen. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty heaven. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Seventeen. Eighteen. Eighteen. I know it's out there because I don't have any. <laughs> sing praise, sing the praises of the Lord, you his faithful people. Praise his holy name. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. 
34. Twenty-five. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Thirty. Isn't that great? Yeah. Doesn't it feel good to praise the Lord? Yeah. I'll tell you, I think we ought to do that about every Sunday. Just have a psalm. Boy, listen, there's 150 psalms. Some of you are going, oh, no, don't do that to us. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Stand with me and let's give praise and honor to the Lord. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is thy help and salvation. All ye who hear, now to His temple draw near. Praise Him in glad Is God worthy of all of your worship? 
of all of your praise. Do you believe that with all your heart? Father in heaven, we humbly bow before you. You are worthy of our whole heart and life. You said in your word to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, as well as loving your neighbor as yourself. Lord, that's the commandment, the greatest commandments, and today we honor that commandment in this place. We worship you with all of our heart in Jesus' name, and all the people said together. Amen and amen. So glad that you're here today. You may be seated. What a wonderful day this is going to be in the presence of the Lord. We do worship the Lord with all of our heart. Um, we're, we are going to go ahead and cancel our prayer time tonight because we have a, a lot of illness and so on. And so we're not going to be having our prayer time tonight. But I would ask if you would be certainly praying for one another as well as praying for the needs in our nation in these days. <coughs> Excuse me. In addition to the uh, men's coffee time and the, um, um, the uh, women's uh, time on Thursday, men's coffee time at 10 o'clock at the Pinion Cafe, the women's uh, time on um, Thursday afternoons at, the, um, <coughs> at Culver's. We have a, a Bible study on Fridays at 11 o'clock here. You know, take advantage of that. Um, we have some missionaries coming on uh, uh, August the 20th. Uh, hope you'll take advantage of that. We'll have a time of fellowship together on that Friday evening and uh, looking forward to that. And uh, Jeanette, where's Jeanette? Is she, is she nearby? Nearby Jeanette, do you, would you like to explain that work and witness project that uh, is coming up that folks might want to last minute take advantage of? You know what I mean? The one that's going, uh, and we need some tech, tech type people, I think, techie type people. You want to explain that? I don't know anything about technology, so so it certainly won't be me, but there might be somebody that you know that might want to be a part of that Work and Witness project. My son Rob is asked me to advertise this because there is a team going over to Busingen, Germany. I've been there. I mean, you'd want to go just to see the gorgeous place. It's so pretty. But anyway, they're going to be do, uh, completely renovating the, the uh, computer system for our Nazarene headquarters in uh, Eurasia, that's the Eurasia headquarters, Busing in Germany, and they are looking for two or three more tech-savvy people. And if you're a tech-savvy person, then you know what they're talking about. <laughs> so if you would like to know more about that, talk to me afterwards and I'll give you uh, my son's um, email and phone address, our phone number, and you can call him and talk to him and get more information about that. Uh, it's coming up toward the end of September, so it's pretty soon that you would need to make a decision. Thank you. Great, great. So if that's something that you're interested in, be sure to uh, let Jeanette know, and we'll get you the information for that special um, work and witness project. It's coming up fairly soon, so we need to uh, work on it, uh, act on it fast. Um, we have a Roundup Sunday coming up on Sunday, August the 22nd. Great day to invite your friends. You all receive flyers. Use those flyers to invite somebody and uh, use that as an opportunity to bring people in. We have a special guest, singers, who are going to be here, here that day, and I'll be bringing a word, a kind of one of my cowboy sermons. So it'll be a great time together in the Lord on that particular day. Use these as opportunities for evangelism. Remember, we're focusing on the seven essential uh, ministries of the church, and one of them is what? Evangelism. Amen? Evangelism. If we're not a part and doing our part to evangelize, then we're not being the church of Jesus Christ that the Lord wants us to be. So take advantage of that. Use that as an opportunity as well as other uh, opportunities that we present uh, for you to invite people. We have a birthday today. Homer Manili is 37 years old today, and, uh, and we want to wish you a happy birthday today, Homer. We're so glad that uh, this family is a part of our church family now. Let's sing happy birthday to Homer. Today's the day. Amen? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Give him a hand. Oh, 
Did you want to say something, Homer? Okay, very, very good. Praise the Lord. Well, let's continue our worship of the Lord, shall we? We want to honor him above all. And Father, I pray that you will be blessed by our worship. Lord God, check our hearts and make sure that we truly are worshiping you in Jesus' name. Build, our, build the worship setting here in this place, I pray. Build the spirit of worship within this place, for that's why we are here. Praise the Lord. Let's sing together. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the world thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul. Sing it out. Sing a new song. Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Sing that together again. Rainbows, 
living color flashes of a lightning rolls of thunder blessing and honor strength and glory and power be to you the only wise king sing it out you this morning father with all of our heart with all of our soul with all of our mind with all of our strength we began the service giving praise to you worshiping you honoring you praise be to the king of kings and lord of lords with our whole heart we worship you this morning and we're so grateful lord for what you have done for us. We don't worship you and praise you only because of what you have done for us, but what, what, because of who you are, Lord. We worship you. But we are grateful for so great a salvation. We are grateful, Lord, for the great thing that you have done for us. You loved us so much that you gave your one and only Son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have our everlasting life. You, you, you uh, made the way for us to be saved, to be brought from death to life through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, your one and only Son. What a great sacrifice you made, Father. What pain you must have gone through to see, your, to see Jesus on that cross sent to the world to be the redeemer of the world, and the world rejected him and nailed him to a cross because of our sinfulness, rejected and nailed him to a cross. But God, by your grace and power, you raised him from the dead so that all who would believe would be saved. We thank you for that. As we come to the table now, as we draw near to the table, Father, I pray that you will help cause us once again to remember, to be reminded of that great, of how deep your love is for us. Oh, we worship you now, Lord. In this manner, we pray in Jesus' name. I've asked Homer Manili to come and our church board members to come and prepare the elements for you to receive them. Church board members, if you'd come and prepare to distribute the elements.
you folks could just kind of move to the to the side there and I'm going to invite you folks to come when you when you have prepared your heart to come and to receive these elements may the Lord bless you as you come come to each one of these any one of these uh, persons standing in the front Receive these elements. You don't have to be a member of this church to receive these elements. You just need to know that you have accepted Christ as your Savior. You can just stand over there if you like. Stand over there and the folks can come to you. wounds have paid my ransom. We're okay. It's okay. His wounds have paid my ransom. Aren't you glad of that today? 
and it makes him worthy of all of our worship. On the night that Jesus was betrayed and arrested, brutally beaten, rejected, mocked, and nailed to a cross. Before this happened, he was with his disciples, as you know, gathered in a room, an upper room, and they were celebrating the Passover. Jesus took the bread. As a part of the Passover feast, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. He said, eat this as often as you do it in remembrance of me and be thankful. And then Jesus took the cup. And as he distributed the cup, and each one took a sip from that cup, the cup of redemption, Jesus said, this cup represents my own shed blood, shed for the remission of sins, shed for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus said, drink this as often as you do it in remembrance of me and be thankful. Are you thankful for Jesus today? Amen. Are you thankful for what Jesus did for you so that you could be made in a right relationship with God? Are you thankful? Does it fill your heart full of praise and worship unto God? Is it make God even more worthy of your praise? If so, then let's sing it out, shall we? Worthy, you are worthy. King of kings, Lord of lords, you are worthy. Worthy, you are worthy. King of kings. I worship you, Jesus, you are Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords, you are Jesus, Jesus, you are Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords, I worship you.
Accept the praise from our hearts, O God, today. In Jesus' name. And church, all of us together said, Amen Amen and amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. He's worthy. He is worthy of all of our praise. Do you believe that today? Praise the Lord. Turn with me in your Bibles, if you would, please, to Psalm 96, Psalm 96, as we look into the Word of God together, Psalm 96, and stand with me, if you would, please, in honor of the reading of the Word of God. Psalm 96, we'll be reading verses 4 through 13, Psalm 96. Verses 4 through 13. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord the glory, glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. (coughs) Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established. It cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Speak your word into our hearts now, Lord. This is important stuff, and we better get it because one day we will see you face to face. Change our hearts even now in preparation for that moment when we see you face to face. Change the hearts of your people, O God. Cause us as a nation to return to worshiping you above all. Starting right here in this place, help us to worship you rightly, for you are worthy of all glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad for the Lord today? Last Sunday, we began our journey together focusing on the seven essential ministries of the church, the seven essential systems of the church, if you are worship, evangelism, assimilation, discipleship, pastoral care, church planting, and finally, of course, the church property and the finances. I want to encourage you to become acquainted with this because we're going to be focusing on these seven areas. We're going to be focusing on beefing up, if you will, all seven of these areas. We're going to, we're going to uh, focus in each one of these areas. They are the seven biblically mandated ministries of the church that God wants us to accomplish well for his glory and honor. For the next several weeks, we're going to be shining the spotlight, if you will, 
and to each one of these areas and improve the quality of each one of these systems. That, and, and I believe that if we will do this, that God will be greatly blessed. God will be pleased if we will make sure that we are doing these things well. And every one of you is a part of this. Every one of you is a part of the work of the church. And I believe that if we really focus in on each of these areas, God will be greatly pleased. And I believe that God will bless this church family with abundant blessings and with great joy as well. But we begin the uh, looking at each one of these, obviously, with system number one, as far as I'm concerned, the most important one, and that is worshiping God. Amen? We learned last week uh, as I presented this to you and opened this and be be we began talking about this that uh, uh, we, we learned that uh, in the early church uh, they, they asked questions about, about man and relationship with God and so on and they came up with this idea, what is the chief end of man? And the answer was the chief end of man is to what? glorify God and to enjoy him forever. Isn't that good? Glorify God, the chief end of man, the primary focus, the primary for, uh, purpose of man is to glorify God, but not just glorify him, enjoy him. Amen? Glorify him and enjoy him. Well, that sounds all good, but what is worship? What is, how do you define worship? How do you define worship? What is your worship, your idea of worship is? We want to ask this question together. As you heard at the beginning of the worship service, the book of Psalms is filled with literally hundreds and hundreds of, of scriptures that all do what? All these scriptures, this was just a little sampling. This was just 33 of, out of the 150 psalms that there are. And, and what do these psalms focus on? Giving praise and glory and honor to God. Giving praise and, or, and, and honor to God. With this idea in mind, then, how do we do this? What is true worship? What does it really mean to worship God? What is true worship? I looked in the 1828 version of Webster's Dictionary. Why did I go back that far? Well, because unfortunately over the years, mankind has messed up the English language. But Webster, you know, he, he had it. And if any of you, uh, any of you know uh, Webster, he, he was a deeply godly individual a deeply part, part of our nation's heritage. He was at the, a part of the, of the core of our nation's heritage, and he began developing a dictionary of the English language. And I looked it up in, in the original 1828 Webster's Dictionary, and this is how he defines worship. The act of paying divine honor to the supreme being. The act of paying divine honor to the supreme being. And the verb worship, the action word worship, he defined it as to honor God with extravagant love and extreme submission. So that's how they defined worship back in the day. What about today? Today. Do you think that the definition of worship has changed? It probably has, but should it have? What is genuine worship? The, the verb to worship is to honor God with extravagant love. When you come into this place, when you come to worship and actually worship, what, it is, it, what is it that you're doing? You hopefully are, are honoring God with extravagant love and extreme submission. Isn't that good? Extravagant love to God and extreme submission to God. From that we see, first of all, the... Uh-oh. It quit. Can you reload it? 
quickly. There it is. There it is. The, the, the priority, the very first thing we see is the priority of worship. What is the priority of worship? <laughs> Folks, worship is not just about a, a certain style of music. Can I say that again? Worship is not about just a certain style of music. Worship is not just about the amount that you place in the offering plate. Worship is not just about volunteering to teach the fifth grade boys Sunday school sacrifice, uh, although that is an extreme sacrifice. Okay? It's not just about those. These things are expressions of worship, true expressions of worship, but they do not define what true worship really is. Folks, true worship is divine, defined by the priority that we place on Almighty God in our lives. Amen? True worship is defined by, by, the pla by how we place God in our lives and where God is in our list of priorities. Is God, the, your heavenly Father, the number one priority in your heart? Is God the number one priority of your everyday living? Everyday living, is it about Almighty God and giving praise to God? Is your life lived because the top priority in your life is Almighty God and your relationship with Almighty God? Is your, in other words, is your love for God extravagant? Is your love for God extravagant? I want you to think, I want you to examine your heart right now as we talk about this. Examine your heart right now. Jesus said, if you love me, you will what? Obey my commands, right? If you truly love me, you will obey my commands. What did Jesus say was the greatest command of all? Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your mind, with all of your soul, with all of your strength. In other words, folks, your whole being is wrapped around what? Loving God. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my command. What is the greatest commandment of all? Love the Lord your God with your whole being every single day, 24-7. You are living your life in worship and honor to God. Everything that you do is done as an act of worship unto God. Amen? Yes. Folks, true worship is a matter of prioritizing God in your heart and being expressed through a lifestyle of holiness and purity before God and, and living your life unto him as the top priority in your daily life. In the scripture verse, in the psalm we read, Psalm 96, 9, it says, Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The priority of worship, the number one priority of our, of our whole life is to bring honor to God and to live in honor to him each and every day expressed in, the, in holiness. Praise the Lord. The second thing we see is the focus is on the person that we worship. The priority, our top priority is Almighty God, the person that we worship. Fo folks, we worship God because he is God, period. Amen? We worship God because he is God, period. Our extravagant love and our extreme submission to the Holy One, it flows out of the reality, fo uh, folks, simply of this, that Almighty God is God and there is no other. Almighty God, our, he is the creator, who, he, is the, the, he is our creator, and he's the one who loved us first. We love God because he loved us first. He created us, and he loved us. Our God created all, he is above all, there is no one other than him. There is no one beside him at all. In Psalm 96, we read these, uh, these uh, verses 4 through 6, says, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nations are what? They're idols. But the Lord 
made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Folks, all of our worship is aimed at the one and only God, the only true and living God. All of our worship must be aimed toward the only one who alone is worthy. He alone is the omnipotent one. He alone is the omniscient one. He alone is the omnipresent one. There is no other besides him. Amen. Our God is the only one who revealed himself as the triune Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. No other God at all has revealed himself to be who he is other than our God. Amen? He is worthy. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. There is no other. There is only one God, and there is no other. From ancient times, the uh, Almighty God, um, through his word, directed every Hebrew parent to teach their children what is known as the Shema. How many of you have heard of that before, the Shema? Deuteronomy chapter 6. And, and God instructed parents to teach this to their children and so, from the time they were very, very young, they learned these verses and learned this, and it became a part of their heart, and, and, and they were taught to take this to heart, what is known as the Shema, which in Hebrew means hear or listen. The word Shema means listen or hear this. The word Shema is also translated by the English word obey, which is interesting. The, it's the same word that's translated obey. So when you say hear, instantly the thought is, I got to obey this. To listen means to obey. And there they are in, uh, uh, this is in, uh, instilled into their hearts. It's interesting that the Hebrew word Shema, the root word is the word Shem, which means name, the name. So to listen means to obey, and you obey only one, and that is Almighty God, because there is no other name. Amen? Amen. To listen means to obey, means to obey the only true and living God. The name, Shema, Shem, the name. When you think of the name, in Hebrew, many people, many Jewish people will not even say the name God, but they will say Hashem, which means the name name. Hashem, they'll use the name, the word Hashem for God because they revere God so much they won't even say the name of God because within their hearts there's so much reverence for who God is. Even to speak his name would be, would bring a spirit of, of fear and humility. I want you to listen to the words of the Shema that's taught to every Hebrew child that is recited each and every day, sometimes twice a day among the Hebrew people around the world. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. In other words, everything you think and everything that you do is all about what? Tie them as symbols on your hands, what you do. Tie them as symbols on your foreheads, what you think. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. 
Folks, doesn't that sound like the spirit of worship to you? about everything that you do every single day, every year in your home. It's all about worshiping God. When you're walking along the way, when you're with your kids or grandkids or whatever, you're talking about who? You're talking about God. You're talking about worshiping God. You're talking about relationship with God. What a spirit of worship. Doesn't that sound like worship to you when you read these scriptures? How many of you have heard of the Ten Commandments? Let me see your hands if you've heard of the Ten Commandments. How many of you know them all by heart? How many of you can recite all Ten Commandments? This is a test. What's the very first commandment? You shall have no other gods before me. The very first commandment, you shall have no other gods. Some translations say before me. Some translations say besides me. You shall have what? No, no, nada, nothing, no other gods in your life except the one true living God. Tell me something. Do you worship God only for what he can do for you? Do you worship God only because of what you get out of the deal? Do you think about God only when it serves your own purposes? Or when something goes wrong and you want to blame someone? Or do you worship Almighty God alone because he is the one and only true king and the Lord of your life? Because he alone is God and you worship him because of who he is, period. Would you continue to worship God if from this day forward God did absolutely nothing for you? If God did nothing else for you, would you still in your heart worship him simply because of who he is? If he did nothing else for you whatsoever, would you still honor God and worship him? Would God still be worthy of all of your worship? Or is your worship entirely dependent on what God does for you? Let me ask you this. If that's, if that's the way that you think of, I'll worship God as long as I get this and this and this, who really is God? Amen? Who really is God? If Yeah, I'll worship God as long as I get this out of the deal and this and this and this and this and God does this and God. Who, who's God here? It sounds like to me that God is more of a servant to you rather than your creator and the Lord of all. You see, you shall have no other God besides. Amen? Do you worship God only for what he can do for you, or do you worship God simply because of who he is, period? the person of worship. What about the promise of worship? Let's get to the good news here. Folks, how many of you believe that there are some promises for worshiping God? Tremendous promises. (laughs) Because of who God is, And because of our God's imaginable love and generosity towards us, Almighty God chooses to respond to our worship. He chooses to respond to our worship and through our worship. How many of you have ever heard that God inhabits the praises of his people? God inhabits the praises, the genuine praises of his people. Folks, the promise of God is that when we truly worship God with extravagant love and extreme 
surrender, extreme submission, God will come and his presence will fill your heart. Not always in the way that you think. Sometimes when I worship God and I'm in the spirit of worshiping God, so on, I don't always feel good. In fact, sometimes God gets on me a little bit when I start really worshiping him and he starts to speak into my heart. How many of you have ever experienced that? God begins to talk to us a little bit. See, God said, if you really worship me, I'm going to show up. Psalm 96, 13 says, Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes. And when he comes, he does what? He, he judges. He judges. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. Let me break this down a little bit. In verse, verse 13 needs to be seen in light of verse 9, where it says, Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him. God is holy. We are not. And so if God shows up, somebody's going to change. <laughs> Amen? If Almighty God shows up as we're worshiping and, and submitting unto him and he shows up, somebody's going to change. And guess what? God doesn't have to change. So when God shows up, he begins speaking into, into our hearts, and he shows up in his holiness. He is holy, and we are not. And if God shows up, when we truly draw near to God and he draws near to us, the first thing that God does is begin to inspect our hearts. When we worship our God rightly in the splendor of holiness, he will begin to inspect our hearts and begin to reveal anything in our lives that displeases him. Amen? But that's a good thing because God disciplines those that he loves. Somebody is going to change if God shows up. As we worship, as we come to worship in the, in the splendor of his holiness, God begins and, and really submit ourselves unto him. God begins to speak into our hearts. Folks, listen, when God comes, he comes to judge. He comes to inspect. He comes to change. He comes to love. When we offer God our true worship, we are inviting him to come and to inspect our lives. If we're coming to truly worship him and truly give him the honor and the glory, then we are saying, God, come and take a look. Come and take a look. Is there any, how many of you love that Psalm of David? See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. So when we come to worship, it's not about feeling good or, or what I get out of the service. It's about coming and laying our lives before God and saying, God, come and take a look. I'm yours. I, I offer my extreme love unto you, and I extremely submit my life unto you. Come and take a look. I'm yours, Lord. Change my heart. Change my life. Here's the promise. As we truly love God extravagantly and submit to him extremely, we are the ones who are transformed into God's likeness because he will reveal truth about us and then we say yes to him and surrender before him and allow him to change and he begins to bless. I love the words of Psalm 37 that says, commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Isn't that great? God comes when we, as we submit ourselves to him and we allow him to change our hearts. We have truly worshiped the Lord. But remember, as I said last Sunday, it all depends on your own attitude of your heart 
as you come into this place. It all depends on your, the motive of your heart and the attitude of your heart as you come into this place, as you enter his gates with thanksgiving, as you enter his courts with praise. Are you entering with the heart that is filled with love for God? And are you entering with the heart that says, I will submit myself entirely unto you? If you come into this place with that spirit of saying, Lord, I'm coming to give myself to you, have your way in my heart, have your way in my life, speak, unto my, speak into my heart today, Lord, I guarantee you God's going to show up because he promised that he would. And he's going to do some wonderful things in your heart and in your life. Every worship service can be a great worship service if we have actually come with the right spirit and the right attitude before the Lord. Amen? Every worship service can be a great time of worship as we come with a right heart and a right spirit. True worship is about having an extravagant love for God, about coming with the spirit of, of loving God extravagantly. And if, you're, if your life is not lived in a spirit of excessive worship unto God and extravagant love to God, and if your life is not lived as, a, as an expression of extreme submission unto the Lord, then I want to invite you to make worship the number one priority of your life. I'm going to invite you to, to allow yourself to make a decision right now. I am going to worship my God from here on out 24-7. He's going to be the number one priority of my life. I, I offer my love unto my, unto my God, and I submit myself entirely unto him. I want you to take a moment this morning right now as we conclude this service and just evaluate are you worshiping God rightly? Do you come in here with an attitude of that's other than laying your heart before God? You come in here with an attitude or, or a, a, a motive of that is other than just saying, I'm going to love God extravagantly today and express my love as we sing together, as we worship together, as we read the scriptures together, as we hear the preaching of the word. It's going to be about my love for God. Is that the spirit? Is that, is that how you are coming into this place, with that kind of a spirit? Just evaluate your expressions of worship. Is your, is your singing, is your declaring, is your giving, is your living truly all about giving to God the glory that he deserves? Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. And as you come you know, with the spirit of, 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 of right worship and with motives that come to, to express your love for God and to, and to lay your heart before, submit your life to then God shows up. God shows up and, and he lovingly changes you and he works in your heart and you sense his holy presence. God always responds to a heart of true worship, and this is how he responds to you. He makes you more like him. He makes you more like him. Father in heaven, speak into our hearts now as we conclude this worship time. Once again, Lord, we, we, we lay our hearts before you. We ask that you will speak into our hearts and in our lives. We ask that you will change the atmosphere and make the worship in this place true and right. And then from now on, when we enter this place, we enter because we want to express our extravagant love to you and we want to submit our lives completely unto you. May your spirit move mightily among us. 
We do pray, Lord, for those who could not be with us today because of the fact that they are not well, they're sick. Lord, we pray for them that your spirit will move mightily in their hearts and, and that you will speak into their lives right now and that they will worship you even right from where they are and that you will bring healing, Father, we pray. Touch our hearts, Lord, today, we pray. We love you, Father. We're so grateful that we have a place that we can come and to worship you. We're so grateful, Father, for this place and these grounds. They are holy grounds uh, before you, Lord. They are holy. This is your sanctuary, and we invite you then your presence to fill this place even now as we conclude this service and speak into our hearts in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Would you stand with me and express your worship unto the Lord as we close this service today? I will worship, I will worship with all of my heart. Then sings my soul, I'm sorry, wrong key. <laughs> then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior. Give God the glory. He's worthy. Give him the glory. Come on, you can do better than that. He's worthy. He is worthy of all of our praise. May God bless you. You are dismissed. Have a great day in the Lord.